So let's discuss how to eliminate subtools. So let's take a look at one subtool. So here we have a network. We have five nodes, but there is a subtool which connects only three nodes in one cycle. Okay? If that happens, it's still possible to satisfy all the constraints you just wrote because another cycle would be here. You may still see that for each link, as for each node, there is one entering and one leaving, right? One entering, one leaving. But still, there are subtools. So we need to impose some further constraints to eliminate subtools to make sure that we really have a big cycle that connects everybody. Okay, so the idea is the following. Uh, you have three links connecting you three guys, right? So I'm going to make this not allowed. For each subset of nodes with at least two nodes, we're going to limit the maximum number of arcs we may select it. So among these three nodes, there are three links. You are allowed to choose at most two. So let's take a look at this constraint. Now, this may be a little bit weird, but we are able to do that. So V is the set of all nodes. Okay. So S is also a set. S is a subset of V, and we say S is not V. Okay. So S is a proper subset. Okay. Proper subset of your set V. And also, we focus only on those S, which has at least two nodes. Okay? If your S has only one node, one node, you don't need to impose anything. Okay, so how's this? Whenever you have a set, for example, these three, then this notation means the cardinality of S, which means the number of elements in this set. So in this case, for this particular example, cardinality of S would be 3. So this is 2 at the right-hand side. Then what's the left-hand side thing? The left-hand side things is that you're going to assign values, assign 1 to this xij. If you say you want to select link ij, you're going to set xij to be 1. So this number 2 says that among these three nodes, the maximum number of arcs you may select is two. So you cannot select three to make a subtour. You can only select two of them. So the thing is that if that's true for all the proper subsets, then this is going to eliminate subtours, right? Because if you say I give you four nodes, then you may select at most three among them. If I have 10 nodes, you may select at most 9 arcs in it. There's no way for you to form a cycle. So that's the idea of alternative 1. So in this case, if you have n nodes, you're going to really have a lot of constraints. Okay? So there are 2 to the power of n ways to choose a subset. And then we know there are n ways to have just a subset with one node. And also there are two ways for the subset of no nodes and the subset of n nodes. All right? So if that's the case, we have so many different constraints. The number of constraints would be very large if we take alternative one. Alternative two is also very clever. We are going to introduce new variables called UI and more precisely, for node i, ui is k if node i is the case node to be visited. Okay? So pretty much our plan is that we're going to label each node. And we're going to label, say that you the first one, you the second one, you the third one. And eventually, we will see how this may help us do the thing. So if we say u is um, the order, that say u1 would be 1. So it doesn't really matter which one do you choose because eventually it's a cycle, right? So it doesn't really matter where to stop, to start, 
let's say u1 is 1. And then for all others, they should all have a u value. But their ui should be within 2 and n. Okay, so pretty much that says no ui would be overlapping. So the last constraint is here. It says that for each node, or for each link, for each link, if that link has nothing to do with your first node, then we have this constraint. What's this? Um, suppose this link is selected, xij would become 1, the right hand side would become 0, and this says that your uj must be at least ui plus 1. Okay, as long as you select a link, your uj must be at least a ui plus 1. So if ui is 1, then this guy would become 2. Somehow it points to somewhere, right? So this guy becomes 3. This guy becomes 4. This guy becomes 5. Let's say this is the place for you to go back to your original points. All right? So you have 5 nodes. So that's why all your UI are numbers between 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. So the thing is that when we are saying all of this, don't forget what we are doing is that we don't impose these conditions on the initial node. So pretty much that says we don't really need to worry about this particular constraint. Okay? We don't need to worry about this constraint. Pretty much that means we don't require this particular u1 to be greater than or equal to the um, u, u, u5, for example, plus 1. Okay? So if that's the case, then what we are trying to do is to say that, okay, you cannot have subtour. So why is that? Suppose you have a graph like this, okay? And somehow you see there is a subtour. Suppose that's the case, then pretty much what we are saying is that, okay, you need to label each node by UI. Let's say these are nodes 1, 2, and 3. Then for U1, U2, and U3, you're going to see that, okay, U2 should be U1 plus 1. U3 should be U2 plus 1. And the U1 should also be U3 plus 1. So that's going to have a conflict, okay? So that's impossible. So you cannot have a subtour. But because at this part, we ignore or we omit the initial, um, initial part, initial node. So pretty much when you are looking at your initial node, it is allowed for you to coming back to here and going out from here. There would be no constraint on this particular link. You don't need to worry about that. After you have passing through all the links, all the nodes, you don't need to worry about and say that after you go back, you need to further have been the constraint saying that this should be related, okay? So pretty much that's the idea. Basically for both formulations, what we are trying to do is to eliminate subtours. So you need to first take a look at the structure of a subtour and then say, okay, you may select at most two links or, okay, you may need to ensure that if this is one, this is two, and then this is three. So you, in either way, you need to take off one, at least one arc, and then there is no subtour. Okay? So that may be uh, somewhat complicated, but if you want to understand this, just give you some examples, and then take a look at this constraint, you will be fine. So when we have n nodes, we may also try to calculate the number of constraints, number of variables we have. So for ui, we need n additional variables, all right? And then for constraints, here we have n constraints in some sense. Um, well, let me do it slowly. This, we have one constraint. Here I have uh, two constraints in one shot. And then that two constraints should be multiplied by n minus one, okay? And then lastly here, 
this is pretty much saying that uh, I don't take a look at node 1. I take a look at node 1 and all other nodes except node 1. So if I have a nodes, I'm going to look at the other set of nodes and look at the complete graph there. So that's going to be a minus 1 times a minus 2 as the number of constraints we have for the last part. Okay, so collectively, basically, I think the number of constraints we have would be 1 plus 2 times a minus 1 plus a minus 1 times a minus 2. Okay, so we can see that there is a difference. If I do this, that's going to be 2n minus 1. Okay. So this 2n minus 1 would be summed to this part. So I would say the number of constraints we need would be 2n minus 1 plus a minus 1 times a minus 2. Okay? So the exact number actually is not so important. All we want to say is that, okay, the number of constraints seems to be smaller. And previously, we have a lot of constraints. The number of constraints is actually exponential. But in this alternative too, the number of constraints is limited, is at least polynomial. So the complete formulation is here. You use the thing we introduced plus either alternative 1 or alternative 2. Then you would have a formulation for traveling salesperson problems. Now our last question is which alternative is good? Alternative 1 has a lot of constraints. Alternative 2 has not so many. Okay, So you may compare the number of constraints. But the interesting thing is that if you formulate the problem with alternative 1, any solver, uh, most of the solver would solve your program faster than using alternative 2. So I certainly don't have time to talk about why here. I just want to show you a very simple fact. First, when you want to formulate a problem, there may be multiple correct way to do it. Okay, so we need to first find a correct way. And the second, it may be the case that one formulation is better than the other. And in integer programming, that means one model can be solved can be found an optimal solution easier than the others. Okay, that's also possible. So somehow in this course, we don't talk, we don't really talk about whether one IP is better than the other specifically. Okay, we from time to time we give you some examples, but we don't really talk about the theory behind it, behind integer programming formulation. That really takes some advanced courses. All I want to say here is that. There may be multiple correct formulations. Among them, one may be the best, or one may be better than the others. Hopefully, you have these ideas in mind. And maybe in the future, you may want to spend some time to study these advanced issues.